Namaste. Good morning. This is Destiny. How is everyone out here today? I am back. I have another video. This is going to be a very hard topic for a lot of people because a lot of people like to bait on this topic. But this is not about a debate. It is not about a hate speech. It's not about an argument. If you are coming here to do that, then I suggest that you just turn around and leave the platform because I'm not putting this information out there to stir up hate, bitterness, and fights and arguments, and I don't do that. I'm just giving out the information that the Creator has given to me. And I just want to be able to share this. I'm sharing knowledge and information. That's all I'm sharing and experiences. So let's get into this topic. So I said, welcome to everyone out there this morning. It is Sunday and it's January 12, 2020. January 12, already 2020. So the topic that I will be discussing today is going to be talking about spirituality and religion. Now, the reason why I am bringing this topic because two days ago, I posted a, a message out there on Facebook. And the message says, spirituality is a way of life. Religion is a social construct with specific rules you must follow to reach eternal life. Spirituality teaches life is already eternal because we are energy and energy can't be destroyed or created, only transform. And I posted that out there and I got a whole lot of views and a whole lot of likes and a lot of people share that, that information. They were passing along to other people. So... I thank you for acknowledging that information and I thank you whoever that you know came up there and you shared it with others thank you because we have to get out messages we have to share messages you know that's what we are here for we are here to share experiences to share to share new information and knowledge and all that so I saw how well that that statement that I wrote Agree with a lot of people, I guess, in their spirituality, their awakening journey on their way to their higher and greater self. So I'll say, you know, Creator, I feel something there. And this is what the Creator, the all-powerful God, you want to call them God, your divine source, your energy, your higher power, your universe, whatever. He is our higher power. He created all of us. And I felt that to share this. So like I said, no debates, no arguments, no hate speech, no coming up there posting your dirty, nasty, ugly comments. And I appreciate, I haven't had any viewers to do such thing. And I really appreciate you guys for being so respectful and so caring and loving and compassionate on my platform. And I, and I just pray that you continue to show that amount of respect for everyone on the platform. But like I said, just in case we have some some uh, trolls that might want to creep in and creep through to want to try to mess up the platform. I'm letting these trolls out there know if you come up there and want to disrespect this platform here at Destiny Forever with ugly comments, with hate speech, with debates, you will just going to get deleted. Totally, absolutely deleted. And I'm going to delete you in love. And I'm going to send peace and joy and happiness your way. And I'm moving on, moving forward. Because I got an assignment that I have to do. And this is what the creator, my creator, God of the universe has called me to do. Is share knowledge, information, and in my experiences. So let's get started. And I'm going to talk about this topic today. The difference between spirituality and religion and I'm gonna repeat the statement that I put out there that I posted and it said again 
Spirituality is a way of life. Religion is a social construct with specific rules you must follow to reach eternal life. Spirituality teaches life is already eternal because we are energy and energy can't be destroyed or created, only transformed. So, religious experience can be viewed in five different categories. And you're like, okay, Destiny, I never heard that. Well, okay, I'm bringing some new information. I'm bringing some new knowledge, so don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just stay right there hanging with me, okay? There are five different categories in religious experiences, and I'm going to explain each, each one of them. Number one is called your vision experiences. You heard people all say, oh, I had a vision, I had a dream, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Visions and dreams, a vision experience. Then you have the voice. Number two is your voice experiences. Oh, people say, I heard God say this to me. I heard God speak to me. I, I, I heard the universe speaking to me. I heard divine power, divine source. I heard the universe send messages. Those kind of things, those are voice experiences when you're hearing through the through nature, through the divine source, through your God or whatever. Those are your voice experiences. Number three is corporate, corporate, corporate experiences. Now, this is like being into your churches, your buildings, your mosques, your different, your, I mean, your kingdom halls. A buildings, whatever building or a corporate people that you are worshiping together with, that is your corporate experiences that you are all having together as a group. Then there is the conversion experience, which is number four. And the conversion experience is like, oh, you know, I felt the spirit coming into me and I invited Jesus, I invited the Lord I, 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 into my life or I gave my life up to the divine source and higher power and all those different things. That's what you call a conversion experience. And I'm going to give you a, uh, a conversion experience of a character. I'm going to call him a character, okay, person, whatever, in the Bible, in X. Chapter 9, it's a New Testament name, Saul. His name was changed to Paul. He had a conversion on the road to Damascus. I'm going to give you just a brief little overall. Like I said, I pulled the Bible in. Y'all know how I feel about my Bible. That's my spirituality guide and roadmap. Not in the way that I was taught in Christianity to believe in the Bible. I believe the Bible is pointing us to our greater and our higher self, our spiritual consciousness state of being, the God consciousness, the God within us. So I'm going to give you a, um, an example of number four, the conversion experience when I take you to the Bible in Acts chapter 9. And then number one is that numerous, that numerous experiences. And you say, now what is that destiny? Now that is having a strong spirituality indication of the presence of a higher power, a divine power, your divine source or your creator. Okay, and that's number five, a, num a numerous experience. Okay, now the claim above all these five I just mentioned suggests that all forms of religious experiences are created by the mind. And don't let that surprise you because like I said, let this mind be in us which was also in our divine source, our God, our creator. Our mind, whatever that we think, whatever our thoughts are, we become that. Whether it's positive, negative, good, bad, right, wrong, it's our mind. Our mind holds all kinds of things up here, and they all create through the thoughts. <laughs> so, we have to renew our minds like the Bible do tell us every day. Our mind has been renewed. Casting down all thoughts and imagination. All those things that come to exalt itself against what the divine source of God, creator, is saying. We have to pull down those strongholds of the mind because the mind can get us into a fix and it will start creating a reality that is not 
in a positive way that the Creator God has created for us to live and walk in and to be our divine consciousness and our higher greater selves. So let's continue. As I said, the claim above all of these different religious experience categories suggest that all forms of religious experiences, they are created by the mind. And like I said, no need to be in surprise of that. And this view is a psychological view and it's adopted mostly notoriously by Sigmund Freud. And I'm sure you guys heard of Sigmund Freud. Well, Sigmund Freud, this is what he believed, that religion is an illusion. And also that religion is an expression of people's desires coming from a person's psychological needs. That's something to think about. Really think about that. I mean, we call it and name it a whole lot of things. You know, we say a lot of things because this is how we are taught. This is how we talk in our faith and our beliefs in Christianity or in whatever uh, uh, religion that you may be in. There's so many religions out there. I mean, I can't even give the name. Like I said, Muslim, Catholic, spirituality, Scientology, Christ, Christian, <laughs> the Christianity. I mean, there are Jehovah Witness, uh, the Mormons, or spirituality. I mean, there are so many. I mean, your God is whatever that you give your greater and higher self to, to believe in, you spend your time with, that you that you are uh, promote, that you worship, that you bow down to. It could be anything. A God could be anything. So we already had that video. I'm not going back over that anyway. But also Sigma Freud believed that religion is rooted in a childlike desire for a father-like figure, such as we say God, our Heavenly Father. You know, when we talk about God, we always address him as our Heavenly Father, our divine Father, we, what we look at that being as someone who watches over us, who provides for us, who takes care of us. And that's what religion, it has rooted us in our childhood, in our child likeness to have that desire for that father figure to watch over us, you know, being called Father God, you know what I'm saying? So, applying this to a religious experience such as the one that Paul had on the road to Damascus, which I said is in Acts. Go to the New Testament, Acts chapter 9. You can read the whole story. I'm sure you've all heard of it. But Paul was also on a journey. Like with all of us, we are all on a spiritual journey. And in, in our spirituality, we are on that path to our greater and higher conscious state of being. We are on a journey too. So, what Freud would say is that Paul experienced of that bright light. When they said that bright light shone around him and he was knocked off his horse. Go and read the whole story. I don't want to talk about on that whole story. I'm just putting it out there. Gave you indicators and points. So you can go and, and read it for yourself. But it was saying that that experience of that bright light and Jesus that appeared, that was, that was part of the story, however they want to tell it, it was constructed by Paul's mind as a result of his psychological needs. And then Freud could suggest that the conversion from Saul to his new self, Paul, was a result of Paul liking a fully supported upbringing from his parents. And like a lot of times when we are liking certain things, then we can go out and create the things that we that we want, that we so desire. Like I said, if you don't like what you are, or if you don't like what you're like of, then go out there and create it. You create your life and your reality, your mind. But you got to make sure that you guard your mind. You got to guard your heart and your thoughts and your words. And you got to send your words into the direction that you want to grow into your higher self. Not send your words into that negative place where it will keep you in your lower consciousness state of being. You want to move into your higher grade of consciousness, your soul consciousness, not in your ego. So, 
Whatever that you so desire, whatever you think in your heart, whatever man thinks that he or she become. So, that's what Freud could have been saying. That Paul was liking a fully supportive upbringing from his parents. But, it was Paul's mind. And like I said, it's, it's that mind. It's that mind. It's that mind that we don't know how to shut off. We don't know how to govern it. We don't know how to make it come under suggestion. We don't know how to bring our minds, I mean, bring our minds under control. We let our mind just have the driver's seat and it runs us and we run behind every thought that is negative, that is not, that is not creating the best for our lives. So I'm not going to that. I've done many videos out there, so check that out. So, but it was Paul's mind that created the experience. To direct him to righteousness. And we always looking at, to that road for righteousness. And we taking the wrong turns and trying to get to it. But we're not looking so much as righteousness. We're looking to find our truths. Find our purpose. Find our greater and higher self. And so we can become the, that divine consciousness. Higher state of being. Because we are God consciousness. But however, there is a little scientific evidence of the subconscious to support Freud's claim of the subconsciousness and deem nurture as an explanation for all religious experience. I don't care whatever your religion you're in or whatever you come out of or whatever you still be worshiping in. No matter what your religion are, I have no thing against that. You worship what you believe, what resonates with you. What you feel is your truth. Your truth is your truth. My truth is mine. We all got to believe and live out the things that we believe. And then you, when you do that, make that choice, you make that ultimate choice that you're going to stick with it. And you be yourself and you live yourself and you don't allow nobody else to come in to try to dictate you or program you to anything. It has to be within you. It has to resonate within you. It has to be your truth. And if you're still struggling with it and you're still wrestling with these things and you're trying to still figure it out, then you have not yet arrived to that place to your truth. You need to keep digging, keep searching, and keep going through different experiences until you find that what resonates with you, that desire that the Creator God has put in your heart. Guys, our minds are shaped and conditioned by our experiences. Creating even stronger pathways of thoughts and beliefs for better or for worse. So, how can the mind engage with the world? Having new thoughts and creating new beliefs without becoming anchored and enclosed by those thoughts and by those beliefs. So, how do we prevent a fortress of opinions? And these different attitudes from hardening our hearts and preventing us from having a truly original, original experience of life. See, we have to keep renewing our mind every day. Our minds has to be renewed daily. We have to put a guard over our lips. We gotta watch, put a watch over our hearts. We gotta, we gotta make sure that we are in tune with what the words of God, our creator, who has created us to be, that we are in line with what the creator is sending for us to speak. And, and I mean, we have to be very careful. Guard your heart. Watch your words. Renew your mind every single day. Because your mind must have entrances. Like you have places to enter and places to be able to exit things out. So we must have entrance and exits. Now, hear what we're saying about your entrance. They are for new ideals to come in, for new understanding to bloom, and an expansion of your current views of what you're seeing. And it must have a challenge to your current beliefs as well. It must have growth, a deepening of your experience of the divine presence and the divine power or whoever your divine higher 
power is, your God is. You, you, you have to have all this has to match. It has to be in sync. And your mind has to have exits as well as entrance. And they have to have exits for all these old things. Old things have passed away. The Bible tells us, now behold, all things has become new. So we got to let go. We got to start learning how to let go of the old things, those old behaviors, those old forms, those old paths, those old beliefs that no longer serve us, that no longer serve our purpose, that is no longer who the creator of God, our higher, greater source and power, who has said what we are. We are created in his likeness. We are created in his image. And we are created for greatness, for our greater and higher soul conscious state of being. So we have to have these exits where all these old things can leave you. Where all these old ideals are no longer needed and they can just fall away. Or an earlier understanding, it can be also eclipsed by a greater and a new understanding of your higher and greater self. So the mind is able to engage dynamically with your life, with open doors for new experiences, with new thinking, and with ongoing rethinking, rethoughts. And it also have to have a deeper level of knowledge and understanding as well. And we have to keep on moving and growing toward what we know that the creator God is calling us to grow. And we got to learn how to start detaching ourselves from the programs of our ego and of all those, those programs of the systems of this world and the matrix and all these things. We have to be able to well, let it go. Let it go and let it go. Guys, we have to start living our greater and higher self that the Creator has called for us to live. As I said, our minds are shaped and conditioned by our experience, creating even the greater pathways of our thoughts and the beliefs, even for worse or even for better. However, how can the mind engage with the world, like I said, having new thoughts, and create new beliefs without becoming anchored and enclosed by the thoughts and the beliefs that we do allow to come to enter into our mind, okay? So I'm just making sure that you all get this slowly. And as I was saying, and your mind has to have exits as well as we have to have those entry points where things have to go out and things have to come in. All negative should be going out. All positive things should be coming in, and we have to have that place. We have to have that place where all the old old ideals are no longer needed. Like I said, you got to drop these things that hold us from reaching out higher, your greater self, let them fall away. Now the mind is able to engage, like I said, within a whole different life when we align ourselves with the creator of the universe, our God. And we will start pointing ourselves into positive beliefs in the faith that God has created for us to live in and our greater higher self instead of living in our lower density of our ego and allowing ourselves to be programmed, controlled by fear and pain and hatred and all those, all those negative things. So, all these other things, like I said, it has to have also have a release of all negativity. And your mind must have all these interests as well as exits and interests for new ideals to come in and for new understanding to bloom and an expansion of your current views, a challenge to your current beliefs and your growth and a deepening experience of your creator God, your divine presence, your higher source, your energy, whatever you want to call it. And your mind has to have exits. Like I said, you got to let these old things pass and behold, embrace the new things that the creator of the universe is bringing into your life. Because he's trying to bring you to your greater and higher self, your beautiful, authentic self. So, that mind is able to engage, I said before, a dynamic with life. With all the open doors for new experiences and we have to be 
accepting. Ready to receive the new things, the new experiences, the new truths. We have to be open for these things. The new thinking, the ongoing rethinking. And also, with open exits, we also have to have a place where all this old thoughts, these old negativity, all these negative things has to have a way to we can be purged out of us. So we can exit out of us. So we can be cleansed and released of all, all negative things that hold us from growing to our greater higher self. All the untruths. All the unhealthy thoughts, the unhealthy behaviors, the unhealthy attitudes, and our unhealthy perspectives of life, the way that Creator God has created for us to live in His likeness and His image as our greater and higher self. So guys, this is how the power of knowledge and the spiritual mind within us can continue to move through our thinking mind as we go through the ongoing challenges of life. Accumulating new thoughts and experiences that we have, that we embrace, that we accept as we go along our way on our journey to our higher, greater self. The divine, your divine God, your whoever that divine is, whether it's your it's God, you call it, your higher power, your divine source, or your energy source, whoever your divine is, your higher, greater power is, it moves through people. It moves through places and it moves through things just like the wind. As I said, we got wherever energy goes because energy constantly moving. We are energy beings. We are energy people. So wherever that your mind goes, that's where your energy will flow. Wherever the mind goes. Remember that. Wherever you allow your mind to go, that's where your energy will flow. So you got to make sure you guard your mind that it does not go toward negativity, to hurts, to, toward pain, toward false beliefs, to negativity of hurting people. I mean, guard your mind. Guard your thoughts. Because like I said, the divine is just like the wind, it moves through people. It moves through places. And it moves through things. And that's what we have to make sure that we are in line with the universe, God, our creator. But guys, to create a healthy draft, a current of air, that breath of the spirit of the most high, our, our, our creator, God, then there must be both an open window for the air to move in as well as an open window for the air to move out. So keep that in mind. That's something you need to think about. The mind is shaped and the mind is conditioned by experiences. It is being shaped and conditioned by our habits and by our repetitive thoughts. Left undirected though, the mind tends to harden. And I mean saying our minds can become really hard a root of bitterness bitterness and all that can build up in our hearts if we just keep those things and that anger and that frustration and all these crazy negative things it can just mess up us terribly the mind tends to harden and it tends also to ruminate on the past justify the past using the present and it look upon reality through an increasingly fixed lens. Whether it be a religious lens or a psychological lens or simply a lens of unquestioning attitudes, assumptions, opinions about life. I mean, you know, hey, there's two coins, there's, there's two sides of the coins always. I mean, you know, they always say, you got to know what side of the coin that you're on. You got to know the side that the coin that your God, your creator, whoever that you're worshiping is, is pulling you on. And that's the side you better flip over on, okay? So, here religion can be a great gift or it can either be a great problem. So, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think? I mean, you're going to drop your opinion in the comments. I'll say, I'm, I'm, I want to hear it. Be positive. Be, be fair, be justice, be, be, be kind with your words. 
and be respectful with your words, okay? But religion can also justify a powerfully fixed lens, causing us to become rigid and righteousness. They call it holding and dire. Holding and dire. That's what they call it. Holding and dire. Also, religions can become a fixed lens and it can come very automatic in our view of others. We become judgmental at times, disliking of, of people, and we can become judgmental on life, just totally life. Or it can also inspire our opening and our renewal of our new view of life. Like I said, choices. Life is choice driven. We, we, we have choices, we can choose. Whether we're going to live on the upside or the downside, or on the right side or the wrong side, on the positive side or on the negative side. To believe in whatever we want to believe in or we believe against what someone else believes in. I mean, whatever. It's choices of yours. You got choices. Choose. So we have to make sure that we are having a renewal of our life review every day. Honoring our mind and its need for a lens through which to see what empowering us always to upgrade the prescription of the lens when it's necessary and you know like i said the creator always knows what is needed like i said and when you keep moving in the direction of your divine source your higher god your creator your higher power he knows what you need he gives you the desires of your heart he knows what you need already so he's going to come and meet you the universe will meet you where you are you got to keep trusting the universe Religion can help us hold, open up space in our experience for the mystery. Holding open the door to the mystery allows us to take an ever-renewing position on our lives. That's something we need to think about as well. And with this renewal comes humility. And none of us can fully understand the reality of God. That's why we're so debating about this this God is right, and that's not the God we should be serving. This is who God is, and that's who the higher power is. That's who the universe is. This is what energy is. This is what spirituality is. This is all about the Muslims. This is about the Catholics. This is the Mormons. All these different, I mean, this is uh, Jehovah. You know, we just constantly fighting and arguing about different things because we don't understand fully the reality of, of God, of what God is, or who is a God, or what a God can be. And I keep telling you, you create whatever you want, that becomes your God, whatever you give most of your time to, that most that you bow down to, you worship, you give your homage to, that becomes your God, whether it's money, people, family, children, houses, cars, whatever it is, your pride, or whatever, any of those things can become a God. So we don't have a really understanding 